So we have more news today that shows Joe Biden is just as much of an establishment scumbag as Donald Trump. Um, so I'm sure most people in the audience are familiar with the Jamal Khashoggi story. Um, Jamal Khashoggi, he was a prominent person back in Saudi Arabia years ago. And then he was turned into a mild critic of the Saudi government. And, and his criticisms were really mild and and not scathing at all he turned into a mild critic specifically because around the issue of the genocide that saudi arabia and the u.s and the uk and the rest of our allies are conducting in yemen and blockading the country not allowing food or medicine into the country um completely destroying the infrastructure over 50 percent of the hospitals way more than 50 percent of the hospitals are not even operational in the middle of a pandemic because we've bombed the shit out of them or because of the blockade and they can't get necessary supplies to keep it open or the doctors are fleeing the country. And we've, uh, uh, and just the, the massacring of civilians by dropping bombs on in civilian areas, on, on apartment buildings and school buses, um, hospitals, open marketplaces. So it's been a genocide. Um, Jamal Khashoggi was, uh, Someone, like I said, prominent in Saudi Arabia, he made his criticisms of the the um, crown prince who was in charge, Crown bin, uh, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, who was in charge of uh, uh, Saudi Arabia and the offensive in Yemen. So he made those criticisms. He, I guess he felt unsafe staying in Saudi Arabia because their long history of jailing and um, murdering dissidents, people who criticized the, the royal family. So he left, came to the United States, became a resident, and I think he was writing for the Washington Post when he was still in Saudi Arabia, but he was definitely writing for the Washington Post um, when he was here in the United States. Then he was trying to get married, but in order to get married, he needed some official documents from the uh, Saudi government to to show that he was divorced from his first wife, I believe, and so the the Saudi government lured him to the Saudi consulate in Turkey, and once he got to the consulate, they there was already a hit team. A team of assassins, literal assassins, a murder squad sent by the crown prince to assassinate Jamal Khashoggi. And he was um, aware of the danger, which is why he went there with his iPhone or his, his um, watch recording everything that happened. And that's how we got the, um, some of the gruesome audio that was published by, I think it was the Turkish government. So they literally staged an assassination of Jamal Khashoggi in the consulate. And it was clear to everybody what happened. His wife was waiting outside the embassy. She, When he went there, she was waiting outside the embassy for him to come out and he never did come back out. And that's when she was um, beginning to uh, uh, raise alarms and, and, and she raised the, the prospect of them actually killing Jamal Khashoggi in the consulate. And the whole story was brutal. They went there with the sole intent of assassinating Jamal Khashoggi. Um, the people who went there were like the top members of uh, the Crown Prince's security detail. Some of the most trained in, in armed combat. They had uh, the one of the top medical examiners, if not the top medical examiner for Saudi Arabia, go there with a fucking bone saw with the express goal of dismembering his body so that they put it in suitcases and take it outside the embassy. So they had this whole elaborate plan to assassinate him just because he was saying mild, generic, really standard criticisms of the crown prince for conducting a genocide. And then the story was even more outrageous because everybody knew what happened. And definitely once we got the audio, 
everybody knew what happened. And it was, oh, I forgot to mention this earlier, but there was video, and this is why everybody knew from the beginning that something, it, like, it wasn't a question. There was also video from outside the embassy, um, maybe another building from the embassy or whatever. And because the, conveniently the, the embassy, the cameras at the embassy weren't working, but there was cameras across the street or another building that uh, was facing the door, the entrance to the, the consulate. And they saw Jamal Khashoggi come in. They didn't see him come out. And so we all knew what was going on. We all knew it was an assassination. But then the Trump administration starts to, to run cover for Mohammed bin Salman and act like, oh, we don't know what happened. It, we, we don't think that, that he had anything to do with it. And then they try to, the, then there was this whole cover up and the crown prince locked up the people, his the member of members of his own team, who he sent to do an assassination, locked them up and act like they were behind the whole thing. Acting like they didn't do it at the direction of him. So the whole thing was a fucking sham, it was a farce. And it was outrageous on so many different levels. And the Democrats were clutching their pearls and like, oh my God, I can't believe Donald Trump is covering for Jamal for for an assassination of a U.S. resident, a, a, a journalist in the United States, an assassination because he was he wrote something that a powerful government didn't like, and Donald Trump's out there defending him. Donald Trump's out there running cover for him. Well, now Joe Biden's in the White House. Joe Biden can do whatever he wants now. Joe Biden can uh, try to open some type of criminal investigation into Mohammed bin Salman. He can do all types of public pressure to get him, um, make him step down, and try to bring him before the International Criminal Court. And, and try to, all these different things, these different things to try to hold uh, MBS accountable for the assassination of a U.S. resident and a journalist. What did Joe Biden do? He comes in, the CIA or the State Department, they released some, some report that says what well, we all already knew, Jamal Khashoggi was assassinated at the direction of Mohammed bin Salman. And the Biden administration then says, but we're not going to do anything about it, though. So the only difference between how Trump handled this situation and how Biden handled the situation is Trump was pretending, we all knew it was bullshit, but he was pretending that Mohammed bin Salman didn't assassinate Jamal Khashoggi. And the, what Biden is doing, he admits it. But he also admits that we're not going to do anything. And he goes into the, all this bullshit. Oh, they're allies. They're great allies. And, you know, we can't disrupt the relationship between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia. They're one of our top allies in the Middle East. And they help. Well, they didn't say this part, but this is really what it is. You know, they they help us with the oil money. They help us do illegal interventions and occupations all over the Middle East. We have to stick by our buddies in Saudi Arabia. And... It is just, it is just wild. It is, it is insane. And I know that, um, it, in this country and really around the world, it is just the elites, the oligarchs, they are above the law and they are never held accountable for anything they do. But this was just such a over the top and brazen, cartoonish, and, um, like, it was just something out of a movie, like, to stage an assassination in broad daylight, in front of the world, and to, for them to just get away with it and everybody act like nothing happened, MBS is still welcomed here in the United States. Like, what the fuck? So, it gets to, uh, so what kind of precedent does this sit down? Because it's, it's official. He's going to get away with this. There will be no consequences for this. So uh, what are we saying now? That any dictator around the world, as long as they're friends with the United States, they can assassinate their critics, even here in the United States, and we won't say a goddamn word about it. We won't do anything about it. Wow. Wow. It's it's kind of wild because, again, if you read some of the the, the posts that Jamal Khashoggi made, it it wasn't even like he doesn't even go as hard as I go at MBS. 
he was it was more like hey you know I, we've, we've been doing this for for a while it's at a it's at a stalemate there's a lot of destruction and i think it'd just be good for for humanity it'd be good for the region if we just went about peace and we just you know put this war behind us and, and ended the the military um operation that's all he was really saying and because of that he was assassinated so it does send a chilling effect to anybody who is going to public crit publicly criticize the the Saudi government the royal family in Saudi Arabia and it's just a, it's a very weird feeling because I know I don't I'm not as prominent a figure as Jamal Khashoggi I'm not on the radar of the Saudi government but still somebody who is saying similar critiques as I have even more mild critiques of the Saudi government that got him assassinated and then they got away with it what the fuck like so again like it makes you wonder so is it there's no red line they can do this to any journalist anybody in the, in the united states who criticizes them or anybody around the world who criticizes mbs it's wild and this is just um further proof that donald that joe biden is hostile to the press he's an enemy of the press because this is this isn't an isolated incident your good friends, your buddy in Saudi Arabia, assassinated, chopped up, and beheaded a journalist for doing journalism. And you're going to do absolutely nothing to hold them accountable for it. You're going to do absolutely nothing to make sure that this never happens again. All while you're doing that, you're going after Julian Assange. You're trying to prosecute Julian Assange. You're trying to throw Julian Assange in prison for the rest of his life. For what? Doing journalism. So when people were criticizing Donald Trump, and rightfully, because he was um, hostile to the press, but the way they did it, it wasn't off of the most really substantive, serious offenses to the First Amendment and to, to the institution of journalism. It was always, oh, he's so mean to Jim Acosta. Oh, he called, he said, sleepy eye Chuck Todd on, on Twitter. He's bullying Chuck Todd on Twitter. Oh, he's such a threat to journalism in the First Amendment. It was always these petty personal grievances among these, these media elites in the United States who had, um, were working at, at these powerful institutions. And they just had personal beef with Donald Trump. And they were trying to paint that as if, that's the, the threat to the First Amendment. That's what everybody should be focused on. No, what we really should be focused on is how the government not, goes after journalists, like legally tries to lock them up, goes after journalists and whistleblowers and their sources, try to lock them up for exposing crimes of the government. And then in this instance, covering up the assassination and the murder of a journalist here at one of the most prominent papers in the United States. So wild story and again joe biden is just as much a shit bag on this as donald trump tool of the establishment will not rock the boat even if that means that that um but could jamal Khashoggi murder go away with um absolutely no accountability and it also makes you wonder because this was so coordinated and so well planned and if his wife wasn't waiting outside the embassy, if he wasn't recording on his Apple Watch or his whatever it was, and, and sent the, the recordings to a, another device, if Jamal Khashoggi was not prepared for this event, they would have murdered him, they would have assassinated him, they would have disappeared him, and nobody would have been able to point the finger at the Saudi Crown Prince. So it makes you wonder, how many times have they done this? Because the, the level of detail and planning and going into every level of this from the the picking the members of the the hit team to the um where they chose to do it how they chose to lure him out there how they disposed of the body chopping him up and putting them in in, in, a, in several different briefcases to bring him outside the embassy this is so well planned it makes you wonder how many times have they done this to other dissidents to other critics of the saudi government and how many times other world leaders have done this too because we know here in the United States, um, first of all, the president has an assassination list. That's not a conjecture. That's not speculation. The drone assassination program is a very real thing. And um, the CIA comes up with this list of, of 
terrorists, alleged terrorists around the world. They present a list to the president, and the president off that list picks who they, the U.S. wants to assassinate with drones. That is an assassination program. And we also know historic assassinations that the U.S. government was involved in are um, Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Fred Hampton. So it really makes you wonder how much this shit is actually happening because it sounds conspiratorial. It sounds like some shit in a movie, but we all saw it happen with Jamal Khashoggi. And we all saw, saw how well-oiled the machine is. And the fact that Joe Biden's going to let it slide and do absolutely nothing, that is just, there's no defending that.